Katamari Damacy is a weird little game about rolling up objects into a giant ball. There's no other game like it, apart from its many sequels. It's an epic game. The concept is very simple, but it's insanely fun, and it's enhanced even more with its great soundtrack. So what's the story of this game? Why are we doing this? Here's the main character of the game. He's the Prince of the Cosmos. His dad, the King, got drunk and ended up destroying all the stars in the sky, and he wants us to go fix it because he's lazy or something. We go to Earth and roll stuff up to toss it up into the sky and replace the stars. We're going to be playing the PS2 version for this video because I already played the reroll and I wanted a different experience. Also, look how much better the Prince looks in the original. The first thing you see when starting the game is the incredibly bizarre intro video, which has mushrooms randomly appearing, and a bunch of animals, like these dancing pandas who turn red for some reason. You also get to hear the amazing theme song for the first time, which is a first taste of how great the soundtrack is. Anyway, after the video, we get sent to the tutorial. The controls in this game are quite weird and take a little getting used to, but they work really well. You have to push both sticks in the direction you want to go. You can also move both sticks up and down really quickly to do a big dash forward. When we're doing pretty much anything in this game, we get a lot of dialogue from the king. Since our boy the prince is a silent protagonist, it's usually the king who comments on what we do, and he's quite mean to us if we fail. A lot of people really like the king, but I don't like him that much. I usually just end up mashing through his dialogue without paying much attention to it. Anyway, after we learn the controls for a bit, we get teleported into a Japanese house on it, where we have to make a 10 centimeter katamari. So you roll up a bunch of objects, like shogi pieces, mosquitoes, and thumbtacks. Every time you roll up an item, it says the name of it, and you get to see a 3D model of it rotating in the corner, which is cool. The creator of Katamari Damacy used to make sculptures, and it's kind of like each item you collect is a different digital sculpture. A lot of the objects even have different sound effects when you get them, and they're even placed in interesting places. Like this time I found a pizza on a car wheel, or well, this crab I found wielding a gun. Once we've finished rolling up our first of many Katamaris, we get sent back to our home planet. We can walk around and change options and stuff, but we can also equip presents, but we don't have any yet. They're mostly just little accessories you can equip, but you can actually use the camera to take pictures. We can go to Earth to do the single player levels, but if we have another player, we can go to the Space Mushroom to play a multiplayer mode where the second player can play as one of the Prince's many cousins. He has like 50 and they have a bunch of strange unique designs. The multiplayer mode is a little fun, but it's not that great. Later games would let you play as cousins in single player levels, but you can't do that in this game. Next, we go to Earth and start our first real mission, where we have to make a 10cm Katamari in 3 minutes. It's pretty easy. We do this in the same house as the tutorial. Katamari reuses levels sometimes, but the items are usually in different places and there's usually some new stuff going on, so it isn't a bad thing. In Katamari, it's usually pretty easy to make a big enough Katamari, so you just try and make as big a Katamari as we can in the time we have. At least, that's what I figure. Once we do the first mission, we get to the second one and have a fun time. It's in the same map, but this time you're likely to get big enough to roll out into the garden, so you get to explore more. There's also a pretty good song here called The Moon and the Prince. After we finish the level, we get a cutscene of the main side story of the game, which is about this family who reacts to the game's events. The PS2 version has their dialogue dubbed Come into on, English, but the reroll only good. has the Japanese. Anyway, the kids are watching some sort of tokusatsu looking show, which is then interrupted by a news report. The guy says the stars are disappearing and the cutscene abruptly ends. Now we unlock a side mission for the first time. In these we make constellations, and the missions have different goals like rolling up as many women as you can, or rolling up things that are twins. In the first one we have to make Kansa, the constellation. We roll up crabs to make it, and it's pretty fun. The song is called Katamari Mambo, and I like it. After every side mission we get a cutscene of the little girl of the family, who can sense the constellations for some reason. In the next level we finally get out of that damn house, and end up in the second map, which is a small town. There's a big section down the road, but because of the time limit, you probably won't get to explore it unless you're an epic pro Katamari gamer. The music in this level is called Gin and Tonic and Red Roses, and like all the songs so far, it's great. In the next cutscene, the kids of the family are trying to tell their mom that the stars are disappearing but she doesn't believe them. And then the cutscene abruptly ends. I'm noticing a pattern here. In the next level, we go back to the house, but now an amazing song is playing called Lonely Rolling Star, which is one of the best songs in the game, and it's part of the reason I'm making this video. Since we spent such a long time in this level, and I'm good at the game, I pretty much rolled up everything in the level. In the next cutscene, we see the boy looking at a big screen, and news report says the stars are coming back, but when he tells his mom, she is not really paying attention. In our next side mission, we have to roll up swan eggs that hatch when we roll them up. By the end, we're pretty much left with a giant ball of Songs. We also get to listen to another one of my favorite songs in this game, Q Sarah Sarah. A lot of the times when I think about video games that are art, Katamari Damacy is always one of the first ones I think of. It's great music and unique graphics and super fun gameplay all come together to make an insanely fun, weird, and unforgettable experience that I really recommend. 
In our next level, we revisit the town, but now we get to explore a lot more of it. We also get to hear this unique computer sounding song called You Are Smart. In the next cutscene, the family are on the plane when the boy spots the king standing ominously in the distance. In our next side mission, we roll up things that have crowns to make the constellation Corona Borealis. It's pretty fun. I like how unique the side missions feel with how the objects are laid out and stuff. They have a lot of creativity and charm. In our next level, we go to the third area. The world. It's a massive area with a bunch of islands and stuff, but we don't even get to explore all the first island due to the time limit. It's still a lot of fun to explore a new area though. In the next cutscene, the family are using a telescope to see a rocket, which the dad is on because he is an astronaut. In the next side mission, we make the constellation Gemini by rolling up things that are twins. Sometimes you accidentally roll up triplets and you don't get a point, which is kind of funny. Next we have another side mission to make Ursa Major. We have to roll up the biggest bear we can in the time we have. The problem being we can only roll one bear or the level will end, and there are bears all around that you have to avoid. It's pretty hard. I wouldn't mind if there was an easy way to retry, but it takes a while because you get sent back to the home planet and then you have to choose the level again and wait for it to load and it's kind of annoying. It's still a good level though. In the next main level, we go back to the world, but this time the area we started in is closed off, so we get to explore a lot more of the other sections. So it's pretty much like being in a new level. We get to explore another town area and a city. It's fun. In the next level, we go back to the town, but now we can explore the whole thing. I ended up rolling up most of the map. In the cutscene, the family are at the space station, but can't find the father. Next, we have another side mission like the bear one, except it's cows. This one is also hard and I'm lactose intolerant, but it's still fun. Next, we have the weirdest level yet, where you have to roll up as many women as you can to make the constellation burger. The level's pretty fun, but I don't like this noise that little girls make, it's really annoying. Lonely Rolling Star is playing in the background, which is great, I love it. In the next level, we go back to the world to make a 30 meter katamari. This time, because of the big time limit and the amount of items, we're likely to start exploring other islands for a bit. This level also plays Q Sarah Sarah, which is great. In the next cutscene, the dad runs over to his family and says that the rocket launch is cancelled because the moon has appeared. Then we head to our final constellation mission where we roll up fish to make Pisces. It has a song which I don't know the name of with a bunch of kids singing. It's good, but not one of my favourites. Next we have our last side mission where we make the North Star. This level's a bit different from the others. You have to roll up a Katamari and then stop when you think it's 10 meters. It's kind of hard. Next we have our final level where we make the moon. We're given 25 minutes to roll a 300 meter Katamari. The main theme song plays in the background and by the end of this level, you'll be rolling up entire islands. The composer of the game said the theme song was specifically made to get stuck in your head like an evil curse. And I think it worked. I still remember it even though it's been like 6 years since I last played this. It's cool to see how far you've come from the start of the game. A few levels ago we were just rolling stuff up on a table in a house, and now we're rolling up the entire world. It really ends the game out, I know. After we finish, we see all the stars and moon in space. The king talks about how tired he was and how hard it was rolling all those catamarans, even though he didn't do anything the whole time it was all us. We're then rewarded with an incredibly weird music video cutscene thing, with tons of random stuff like dinosaurs and mushroom cities. It's so strange, how do people even think of this? After that, the music changes and we get to see our home planet and the space mushroom hills on it. Some stats get displayed like how many items you rolled up, and then we get to Earth where we can roll up all the countries in the world while we listen to a really great song called Katamari of Love. It really adds to the moment. We can see the lyrics of the song displayed at the bottom, and it's a really well written beautiful song, and it's a great moment in the game. Or it would be if I didn't accidentally skip it trying to pause the game. Anyway, the camera slowly zooms out and we see a video of the family on the moon. They seem happy about it though. Well, the boy does. The rest of the family don't even react. The creator of Katamari said before in an interview that he wanted to make things that make people happy, and I think he definitely did it with this game. It's weird how this game is so happy, because if you think about it, you're rolling up innocent people and their homes and stuff, kinda sounds like it could be a horror movie where people are trying to survive and avoid this giant ball that crushes and steals everything in its path. So that was Katamari. It was an epic, epic game. It wasn't very long, but it's a ton of fun to replay, and I'm someone who doesn't even replay games that much. After you finish the game, you can play and unlock endless versions of the levels where you have no time limit, and you can also roll up more cousins hidden around levels. After this, they made a bunch of sequels, but the only one I've played is Wheel of Katamari, which is amazing, and even better than the first. It's actually the last one Keita Takahashi worked on, who's the creator of Katamari, so I don't know if the others would be the same without him, but I might try them eventually since I love Katamari. Hi, welcome to my outro. This is actually the third time I'm recording the outro because the first time it was way too long. It was like longer than the actual video, and then the next time it was good, but I recorded that like right after I recorded the script like months ago, so it was a bit outdated, so this is my new one. Um, so my next video 
I don't know what it's going to be. I have a bunch of ideas for games that I want to review, but I also want to try maybe reviewing an anime at some point. But I've also been re I've been playing Persona 3 recently, and I'm really, really enjoying it. And I definitely would like to make a video on that, but it's a really long game. So I was thinking maybe I should do some videos in between, because that's going to take me ages to make, I guess. So, uh, I could review other games, or maybe review anime in between, but I don't know. But Persona 3 is really, 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 really good, and you should play it if you want to play it. Bye.